Dealing with gradients in your astro images is something that we absolutely all have to do. There's no avoiding it whatsoever. And one of the worst things about dealing with gradients is there's no surefire, purely accurate way to do it yet. Pixie Insight have just sent an email through, probably to many of you guys too, but uh, I just thought I'd make this for anybody who doesn't have the communications preferences set to allow this kind of thing, about this, the multi-scale all-sky reference survey project. This is hot off the press, absolutely brand new news. And I wanted to put my word out there to kind of spread as far and wide uh, the information about this project because it needs some user submitted data. So as many people as possible need to see this and submit usable data for the team to make this tool as good as it can possibly be because this really could be a game changer and I don't use that term lightly. I've had a skim through just now, we're going to take a look again uh, just as I go through it on this video for you, but basically yeah, the multi-scale all-sky reference survey project, it goes through I'll put a link to this just down below, but it goes through on the introduction telling you about how gradient correction right now is a bit of a guesswork process and uh, there's no real good way to get it done properly, but they've came up with a really smart way to actually get it done. If we take, for instance, they're showing you some examples right here. This is a, uh, I think, a 3,400 millimeter, extremely, you know, long focal length, tiny field of view image, uncorrected, right? So there's gradients everywhere. It, it's a gradient again. Now you take that same region, as you can see the object right there. Uh, in a much wider field image. Again, uncorrected. The gradient is, of course, lessened because it's occupying such a small portion of a much wider field of view. So when you use a normal gradient correction tool, like DBE, as they have demonstrated right here, you know, the gradient is lessened once again. If I just mouse over it for you, as you can see, uncorrected, DBE'd. The gradient's almost gone. There's still some, some present, but... If you now paste over that region, you can see just how different the gradient is from that 3,400 millimeter focal length image, uncorrected, to the DBE wide field shot. Now, why this is important is because what they're proposing is to use an accurate library of wide field shots to correct other images from. And it should be an actual true reference library uh, and give you, you know, repeatable. Um, undeniable results, if you will, every time. Now, um, if we take a look here at the original narrow field, Im field image, that same 3400mm uh, uh, Dol Kirkham image, I think, multi-scale cor gradient correction has really nailed it. It looks absolutely <laughs> incredible. And then the same sh shot, just kind of corrected with DBE, just isn't quite as good. It's not bad, but multi-scale gradient correction looks to be absolutely the way forwards now. Generalization of the Multiscale Gradient Correction Algorithm. Oh, yeah, I love the snappy titles on this. <laughs> but um, what they're going to show now, I think, is how you can use multiple focal lengths to correct longer shots. So here's a, a shot of, like, let's say, the, uh, the Milky Way. There's the um, North American Nebula region, the Cygnus Wall right there, etc. This next image that we're going to look at here, Cygnus 35mm image, if you just paste over a 400 mil image of that same region just above, you can see the size of the area that it actually occupies on a wide field shot is tiny. So when you perform a gradient correction on that big shot and it gets it most of the way right, on a large scale, it gets it almost perfect on a small scale um, image. So uh, if we just take a look before multi-scale gradient correction, this is the 400 millimeter shot that we're talking about. And then after, and if you can note, let's say, uh, the before, it's nearly pitch black in that bottom right, quite bright in that top left. After, though, it's quite homogenous all over that entire background. It looks to have done an absolutely wonderful job. I'm excited about this tool. Uh, and now they can use, let's say, that intermediate image that they were just talking about, the 400 mil focal length image, to correct an even longer focal length image of let's say Bernard 150. So there is the uncorrected region on the, the Dol Kirkham. And then using that 400 mil image corrected by the 35 mil image, if you will, it's like a multi-step process. Here it is afterwards. And even on a extremely long focal length um, image, it's, it's corrected the gradients 
phenomenally. You know, you could just crop out those artifacts and process from there, and it's it's going to make your job way easier. Um, now they're talking about how very wide field images can also correct gradients in intermediate focal lengths, like we were mentioning here. So uh, here's a uh, like a lens shot of the Orion uh, Bernard's Loop and uh, Horsehead and Flame region right there being used to correct this image right here. So here it is before multi-scale gradient correction where you can see there's a strong gradient going from bottom to top uh, where it's much darker at the bottom, much brighter at the top. You can't really see what's going on too well in the image. And then after using that other image to correct this one, boom. It's it's ready for processing. You know what I mean? It really does look uh, uh, so promising. Is another example they've provided. So uh, Taurus and Perseus, uh, M45, the California Nebula, uh, the Tadpoles, the Flaming Star, all that stuff going on in this really quite beautiful wide field image that someone's submitted. Um, being used, however, to correct a much longer focal length. M45, which as you can see had really troublesome gradients beforehand. I mean, that looks <laughs> looks like a processing nightmare to actually work on. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful image, but getting it to that, that would take some serious doing. Uh, but it looks like multi-scale gradient correction is just... <laughs> it's magic. How is it doing it? Well, we know how it's doing it now, but anyway. What they're talking about the last thing I want to touch upon, I don't go on too long with this, I will provide a link so you can take much more care to read through this. As I said, I'm just trying to get the word out, spread it as far and wide as I can. This, the Mars U survey. So this is for you guys to look at, read through these rules carefully. Uh, they're looking for Pixie Insight users to contribute wide field images having a field of view between 3 and 50 degrees. So from, you know, fairly wide field to mega wide field. Um, They'll pass the images through a quality control um, process anyway, so don't worry about getting everything absolutely perfect. I'd say just just do your best to not kind of waste their their team's uh, resources in, in filtering through too many images. I would say, but they're looking for I think one other important point to mention. It's all important, but they're really looking for images taken in broadband at least from bottle one through four. So people like me. I can't really contribute because I'm here in bottle seven skies, so uh, <laughs> I'm out. But um, everybody else living in better skies, please, guys, help us all out and, and submit some good data. <laughs> it's going to be completely unprocessed. Uh, it has to be drizzled, even if it's just drizzle times one and no gradient correction whatsoever. So um, those are the basic rules. Again, just check the link in the description box down below. As you can see, they're going to do their own survey alongside this too. But yeah, it, it actually just looks magic. These these mouse over examples are uh, the very telling, you know what I mean, as to where this thing's going. It looks incredible. Like even dealing with this gradient here, this would be a nightmare. Yeah, it's gone straight away with that. If it works as well as it looks, already who knows how good that you guys can make this by submitting your own data uh i just wanted to get the word out there anyway that is about it from me uh i look forward to seeing you all in the next one thank you all for your support as always i hope you'll appreciate the nature of this very hurried video uh but you know there's a limited amount of time i guess for these submissions let's get it out there and, and do his absolute best to make this tool the best it can be for the entire community that's about it. Clear skies.